Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this lecture on mobile commerce and Internet of Things. So I will be only going through the key points, giving some examples with respect to the topics that have been covered. This chapter goes in a greater details on the technology side of wireless uh, applications, uh, such as explaining what are the Wi-Fi devices, what are the different standards for Wi-Fi, what are different standards for mobile computing. You don't need to know about that. We won't look at these from the business viewpoint. So this is kind of brief agenda here. Okay. So let's start with uh, the basic terms. Uh, so very first one, the term comes into play is the uh, wireless. So when you connect your devices to a central access point, the term we use is Wi-Fi here. Right. So Wi-Fi are the devices which are wireless provides you the connectivity. So it works as its central access point. So the next question is then what is the mobile? So we, if you think about the Wi-Fi devices or the access points, they don't change their location, the location is fixed. On the other hand, your cell phone, as long as the connectivity is maintained and it acquires a new location over the time will be considered as a mobile device. So going beyond the examples of cell phones and so on, you have sensors, RFID devices, they will be considered as part of mobile device. So in order to have the Internet of Things, we need to have both of these technologies, wireless technologies to provide connectivity and the devices which can change their location over time or the mobile devices. Now most of your projects will have some component in terms of mobile device. Uh, so when I say mobile device, I don't mean cell phone only, like sensors, RFIDs. Then you have another term, which is MiFi. You all use MiFi devices, so that's when you use your cell phone as a hotspot. So which means your cell phone exhibits both properties, which are of wireless devices, as well as the mobile devices. You can connect your laptop with your cell phone uh, when you're in a train or you are in, in a vehicle, right? So it changes its location as well as maintains the connection. Okay, so any transaction which you can conduct on mobile device is part of M commerce. So we talked about nine different types of commerce activities in the previous chapter. If you can do those activities on mobile device, yes, then it's part of M commerce. For example, a B2C application such as purchasing a cup of coffee from Starbucks, you're ordering from a mobile device. Then you're making payment from a mobile device that becomes part of M-Commerce. So as I said earlier, the Internet of Things, uh, by definition, any de uh, device which is virtually connected, either is man-made or a natural object, is part of Internet of Things. But the key term here is when we talk about connectivity, it's connected to a global network. So I will highly recommend to go through this uh, example on YouTube which has some, some uh, applications of mobile and wireless computing. So please pay attention to iBeacon, um, an example where merchants can push location-based customer-specific content based on their previous purchases. So beacons use the Bluetooth technology. Similarly, the Amazon Go uh, with the concept of physical store by Amazon would completely managed by the wireless and um, and the mobile devices. So that brings us to the advantages. I will not read through all advantages, but I will highlight only some important points. In these days, your mobile devices are not dumb terminals. They have their own computing power. So that's another important aspect of Internet of Things. You don't have devices which rely on centralized servers. These devices should be able to do their own processing. Simple example, when you're using a health fitness app, it counts your steps, generate graphs. You can edit Word document PowerPoints on your mobile devices. The next aspect is bring your own device or the board. Uh, we already talked about this where companies allow employees to uh, bring their own devices so that they can reduce the ID infrastructure costs and provide more flexibility. One of the things we discussed in previous chapters, bring your own device can only work efficiently when you have connectivity. So real-time connectivity is an important. The last part, what we discussed in chapter two, where we said that some uh, businesses 
or some products may disappear right so your smartphones or the mobile devices uh, use the concept of dematerialization where the functionality of several devices is combined within one device so this brings us to some of the major characteristics of mobile computing so from the previous slide we have real-time connectivity the device can change its location the wireless connection is required and if you are purely looking into the internet of things then we want to have a global global connectivity right but not all companies will look into the internet of things sometimes you only want your device to connect to the central server or the internal server uh, one good example from the previous video uh, from the tesco uh, smart badge in this case the smart badge is only connecting to the tesco servers to get the real time uh, price a particular product right so there are the two important aspects mobility and broad reach which is kind of very self-explanatory so this brings us to the key attributes of mobile computing so again going back to the e-commerce chapter you will see most of these attributes ties up with e-commerce because we are trying to extend e-commerce activities on mobile devices now so these are uh, ubiquity so which means information availability despite of device location and type of application you use so for convenience and instant connectivity i will not go into details which is kind of self-explanatory easy to carry smaller devices loss of processing power 24 7 all the time connected to the internet so if you haven't looked at the video please have a look at video and a look at the example of ibeacon so that will explain these two parts we close off these slides if it was a in-class delivery by going through this video case so play this video identify what are different examples of mobile computing and wireless devices in this video so our key focus here is on mobile computing so which means device that can change its location and stay connected in real time then after you identify those devices think about how these are adding value from the customer viewpoint from the store operations viewpoint so one example here is scan as you shop so each customer if he's if he decides to use scan as you shop device they're going to carry this device and they're scanning the items which are they're putting into their physical trolley and once the shopping is completed then they can make payment on the go using their credit card or tesco card so the advantage here for Tesco is that I'm eliminating uh, the queues at my checkout points. I'm enhancing the customer experience by giving him more time that he's going to spend on the store floor instead of standing a queue, which allows me to reduce the staff I required at the checkout points. So from the customer viewpoint, if you think about the customer experience, I don't need to deload my trolley when it comes to the checkout points. I've loaded my trolley made the payment i only deload when i go to my car boot it gives me more time to spend on the uh, store floor doing the shopping instead of standing the queue so overall customer experience increases have a look at the video identify other examples if you have any question send me an email so these are the value added attributes which we discussed in the previous chapter these are all applicable to and commas as well so again revise these let me know if there's any question so that brings us to some of the applications of mobile commerce so let's start with the location-based services so all of you use google maps that's the example of a location-based service so where you're connected in real time and you're using a geographical information system or the gis right and if you go beyond google maps such as Waze, which is a service from Google, which can also provide you uh, information on uh, mobile cameras, uh, traffic related information, so that you can make better decisions. Going beyond uh, the Google Maps in these days, taxi companies such as Uber, they all provide you access to uh, where your service is, either it's a food delivery or your taxi, which you have called. Right? So that's real time location based service. In the video, you if you have watched the video, the very first video, Macy's is using location-based service to push 
the advertisement content uh, to, to the customer based on their eye location or the product they're looking into. Uh, so beacons is an example here. Shopping from wireless devices on the go, which is very common, right? Purchasing a coffee from Starbucks uh, instead of sending, standing into queue. Now, all of your projects will have some application of location-based service. So please explore that using sensors is one example. The second type of service is financial services. I don't think we need to go into details on this. The way you're using your mobile devices to make the payments, right? Or you're accessing information from your financial institute. You're paying your bills using a mobile device. So those all are some of the examples. Intra-business applications, again, where the applications are used within the business. So one example would be, let's say you called a taxi company to book a taxi from uh, point A to point B, then the dispatcher in the taxi company sends the job to a cab driver through a mobile device. So that's the example of intra-business. So lots of applications of this, uh, especially in transportation sector, uh, trucking companies, taxi companies, they receive information through mobile devices for their deliveries, accessing information, through the application. The only thing I want to highlight here is the voice portals such as Siri, Google Talk. So that gives the ad additional capability to mobile devices where instead of using traditional portals or graphical user interfaces, you can use voice portals here. Telemetry. So in telemetry, we look into the devices which use the remote sensors. The so sensors is a keyword. To collect data from remote locations. In these days, all the automobiles they come with uh, sensors. Now, if you think about the advantage of that, so instead of manufacturers such as GM, Toyota relying on the dealerships to provide them data, they can directly collect data on the vehicle health, on the vehicle performance, which can be used to enhance the future products. So that brings us to the concept of Internet of Things. So as we said uh, previously, by definition, any device, either natural or man-made, has a unique identity, which we call IP address. So we should be able to send or receive information without human interaction. Unique identity, so which means I'm connected to the global network without human interaction. So the example, very simple example you can take of a mobile device here. Let's say I have a fitness app on my mobile device. The user's location-based service to count my steps to collect data without a human intervention. Going beyond that, you have sensors into all the modern vehicles and collect data. And it has a unique identifier. So now all of your projects have application of Internet of Things. Please think about that and include this in your project when it comes to application. So there are two important devices or two technologies which are used to implement the Internet of Things. Can you use barcodes? No. Problem with barcodes is they are passive. The so passive device is a device which needs a clear line of sight and it cannot collect data on its own. So some human intervention is required. Similarly, the another technology we're going to look into is QR codes. QR codes are better than barcodes. They can store, store a lot more information. But again, you need a clear line of sight to read from a QR code. The only two technologies which can automate the data collection process is the RFIDs of the network center. So some example, examples of Internet of Things. I would highly recommend to look into the first two videos. I will give you an example of Internet of Things in the warehouse for Amazon and the Tesco's 2020 vision. As I said, all of your projects are linked to Internet of Things, so please explore that. These are also called universal product code. Again, you need a clear line of sight. They cannot provide data on their own. RFID devices can also be classified into two types of RFID devices, active and passive. So RFID devices stands for Radio Frequency Identification Device. So these devices come with 
a, an electronic circuit with a battery and with some processing power. And uh, so you may have seen these devices on expensive items such as laptops, uh, microcores, or some of those stores where they sell the branded uh, bags. They always have RFID devices. This is a very good example from retail. I will highly recommend you look at this video so that it makes some sense how the RFID is work. Okay, so just a quick look at the wireless security. So as we are looking at these devices which are connected uh, without wires, so which means data or the information that you're sending through wireless is carried through what we call the electromagnetic waves. So if any intruder is looking into those electromagnetic waves or ca is capturing the electromagnetic waves, there's a potential that the information can be compromised. So think of a scenario. When you turn on a radio on, on your vehicle, uh, so you're trying to tap into a frequency, right? Like 99.7 FM. So anybody who is tapping into 99.7 FM can listen to that particular radio station. So same concept here. If anybody is tapping into the information that you have sent over the wireless network, can uh, potentially read that information if it's not encrypted. So there are five major threats: ROG access point. So you all have used a ROG access point at some point. So any unauthorized access point into a wireless network. So for example, at University of Saskatchewan, we have our wireless network for University of Saskatchewan. So if you start using your mobile device as a hotspot, it will be called a ROG access point because uh, we are not informing ID. That's why it's unauthorized. And uh, it is not part of the university network. It's your own personal device. But in most of the organizations, ROG access points are allowed, which means you can use your mobile devices to act as a hotspot and to have connectivity to the internet but you always need to look into the ID policy if the ROG access point is allowed or not. So the ROG access point can lead to an evil twin attack. When you connect to a Wi-Fi network, you always look into the network ID. For example, University of Saskatchewan guest, University of Saskatchewan student, or skill network. So that name, we call it network name or SSID. We don't need to know the technical details. So just to explain the concept, let's say I set up a ROG access point and I give it a same name that's used by the organization, so which means somebody by mistake or accidentally can connect to the network that I have set up. So which means any traffic that's sent in terms of information data will go through a ROG access point and which is set up by a hacker or intruder and can have look into the information. So this is called evil twin. So where two access points, one is a real access point, one is a ROG access point having same name okay, so, or same identity. So that's why it's called evil twin. War driving. So this is a problem when you have Wi-Fi networks with a weak security, weak passwords. So again, the idea here is to locate a Wi-Fi network either by driving or walking and getting access to that Wi-Fi network because the password is weak. And from here, you can start looking into data and start capturing packets on that network. You may laugh on this, but this is a very common problem. I have seen companies with a Wi-Fi network password as AVCD1234. Next one is apps dropping. Uh, so again, reading into data or getting access to the data from the wireless networks. So there's special softwares that people use or the hackers use to get access to the traffic. Uh, so one of the software name is Wireshark. So what that software allows you to do, you can read the network traffic. So again, if the data is not encrypted, then you can lead to the issues where somebody is getting hold of information and data which can be critical right so this is kind of a very common problem uh, if you're sitting in a cafeteria and somebody may be capturing the packets because you're sending information data on a shared wireless network rf jamming uh, 
a person or a device intentionally or unintentionally interferes with your wireless network transmission. Best way to understand RF jamming is when you switch between radio stations, you always have some frequencies where the FM station is not clear because there's some interference by the other frequencies. So that's the idea of RF jamming. So again, sometimes companies use RF jamming to block the signals from your personal devices. I have seen that on with this with some of the manufacturing firms, so that people cannot take uh, the proprietary information out. It can be done by the hackers, so that they're jamming your network, so that you're trying to switch to a different Wi-Fi network, and they can start looking, and they can hack your device or look into the traffic that you're sending out, especially to the evil twin attack. So that wraps up the wireless uh, chapter. Again, stick to the slides. All of the exam questions will be based on what we discuss in these slides. If you have any questions, please send me an email. So here's an example of uh, network visualization. So please look at this. Use the Power BI to work through this example first. Then you move on to uh, on to the uh, onto your Power BI participation activity. Thank you very much. Uh, so there's a gentle reminder on the assignment. So please submit that on time through Blackboard. Have a good day, guys. Thank you.